So today's video is going to be about risk management. So helping you make sure you don't lose too much money in any given trade. I'm going to be looking at a formula called the Kelly Criterion. And I'm going to show you how we can use this formula to determine position sizes for all different types of trade and investment setups. This concept is used in sports gambling and other types of professional gambling. And it can be applied to stocks, options, futures, and basically any game where you know the probability that you're going to win and the odds of the payout. So what really got me thinking about this was a paper about the Kelly Criterion that described this experiment where they had participants play a game where they had a simulated coin that would land 60% of the time heads and tails only 40% of the time. So if you think to yourself, you know, would you play this game? It's kind of, you know, intuitively, yes, you should be able to play this game and make money if you win, you know, every time you're right. So you should be able to guess. But you also know intuitively that 60% odds, you still have a pretty good chance of, of having a lot of losing bets. So the amount that you bet could play a really big factor in how long you're able to stay in the game. Now, what was interesting is they gave each of the participants $25 and they capped the max win at 250 and they gave them 30 minutes to play this game out and it was actually only 21 percent of the participants were able to hit the 250 dollars level so on average most people got to about 75 and i'll put a link in the description below to where you can actually play this out and see how how well you do and you'll obviously do better hopefully after seeing this video when i ask people that i know how they would play this game and how they would bet I usually get pretty low bets, so I think people know that they need to bet low enough that the the numbers can work for them over time, but they may not be uh, maximizing their return. So I think the Kelly criterion can also help you um, know when to bet heavy if, if the odds are in your favor. So in order to use the Kelly criterion, we need uh, just a few data points. So we need to know our probability of winning, and then we need to know the odds that we would win. So if we win... So in this case, it was a, you know, it doubled us up. So it was a two to one. But when you think about a trading strategy, uh, usually you have a risk to reward. So depending on your setup or your strategy, you know, you should hopefully know going into any sort of trading situation, you know, if your risk to reward is two to one or one and a half to one, and then also what your odds of winning are. So if we look at the coin flip, payout or B here is just going to be one. P is the probability to win is 0.6. And then Q is going to be 0.4, which is the probability to lose. And then again, that's just divided by one. So we actually get 20%. What's important to remember is that this is a percentage of your complete bankroll. So in this case, if we were applying it to the game and we had our $25, we should be betting $5. If we win, then we'd have $30. We should bet $6. So it's a proportion of what you currently have in your bankroll. Think about that, Kelly, proportion of your bankroll as being maximally aggressive. So this is the max number that you should be betting. In a lot of cases with trading or actually applying this to the real world, we don't always know with absolute certainty what our probability to win is. In that case, sometimes we want to use the idea of this fractional Kelly value which is basically just like a factor of safety. Commonly you use, you know, half or a quarter of what you calculate in the Kelly Criterion formula. So the next thing I want to do is actually apply this to some trade setups. So I'm going to use a couple strategies from my other videos because they're pretty simple and, and pretty effective swing trading strategies. And one is based off of TQQQ and the other one is based off of UPRO. So those are leveraged ETFs based on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 respectively. So in any good trading system, you should know what your risk to reward is and your probability to win is. Those are two basic metrics that you're going to want to know. You should also want to know what your average win is, what your average loss is, and what your max drawdown is. So for me, I've back tested my strategies, um, and the data I'm going to use here is based on how they performed from 2010 to the present. So on the TQQQ strategy, I know that I have a 47% win rate, and on average, my risk to reward is two. And the max drawdown that I saw in this strategy was negative 12%. So we can use the Kelly criterion to try and decide how much we're going to want to risk on 
any given trade. So this is actually a trade that I recently entered. So if I put my data into the formula, my win percentage and my odds, which are two to one, that's based on the average win to average loss ratio on the back testing period that I tested, um, then I get a 20% value for my, my Kelly number. So this means that I shouldn't risk any more than 20% on any given trade. Now you have to remember that this Kelly criterion is very aggressive and also anything that I'm using here in my data is based off of back testing, which is based off of historical data and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have predictive power of how it's going to perform in the future. So usually you wanna use a fractional Kelly value somewhere between two and four, and you just divide the value that you calculate here by something between two and four. Now, if we look at my UPro strategy, you can see that the win rate is a little bit higher and the risk to reward is a little bit lower and just a slightly larger max drawdown. So the max drawdown is gonna help us figure out the actual position size that we can take on because we're gonna get a amount that we're going to risk from the Kelly criterion and then we're gonna to have to figure out what that means in terms of position size. So with UPro, you can see that the amount I'm allowed to risk based on the Kelly criterion is higher. And that's because I have a higher win percentage and that tends to be how the Kelly criterion works. So if we go back to the TQQQ strategy and we look at this 20.5% value that we got from the Kelly criterion, we're gonna divide that by three. That's my fractional number that I'm gonna use here in this example. And that's you know one that I use, it's based on my risk tolerance. So that gives us a max that we're willing to risk on any given trade of 6.8% of the total bankroll. So the way that I convert this into a position size is I use that max drawdown. So from 2010 to the present, uh, when I went back and did the back testing on that data set, the max drawdown that I got was 12.3%. So I'm going to use that as my max that I'm going to risk on any given trade. And that's the value that I put on the diagram there. So if we look at that 6.8%, uh, which I got from my D-rated Kelly number, divided by the max drawdown for this strategy, gave me 55%. So any position that I take should be 55% of my total portfolio value um, if I'm following all of these inputs. So another way that we could think about this is as a portfolio of maybe speculative growth stocks. So let's say you had a stock tip, uh, somebody gave you, they told you that there was a stock that had this 10x potential um, and roughly the chance of that happening was one in five. So that is a game that if you played repeatedly should yield a profitable result, but it's also a pretty low percentage win game. So how much we allocate to each bet is gonna be very critical here. You could also use this framework for something like Bitcoin. Let's say maybe that was something you wanted to get involved with, but you didn't want to allocate too large of a position and you, you thought that there was a fair chance that it could go to either zero or 10X from here. You could apply this similar kind of concept to something like that to determine and how much of your portfolio you wanted to add. So if we plug in the Kelly criterion for this, we get a 12% when we haven't adjusted it at all. So again, that's that sort of aggressive value. If we were to apply a fractional safety factor between two and four, we would get something like three to 6% of, of total portfolio, which is pretty reasonable. That's, that's, that's what I always do, um, something like that. Um, I usually try and keep an allocation of less than like 5% to some sort of more speculative growth stock. So I'll put a link in the description to a Kelly Criterion calculator that basically gives you these inputs and you can put in your values and, and play around with them and see what the different Kelly criterions would be based on your given situation. So the last example that I have is from options trading and you can apply the Kelly criterion to any defined risk trade. So anything where you know the risk at the order entry. So the example that I used here was a one standard deviation iron condor and I just made up some numbers. For this one, if you were to receive a credit of 170, your max loss was 330 and your max gain was 170. This is how the numbers would pan out. We'd have a win percentage rate based on one standard deviation would be 68%. And then we get our risk reward from the max gain and max loss. And we would have a 6% before we adjusted for any sort of fractional Kelly number. So I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. Let me know in the comments section what you think about the Kelly criterion how you do risk management for your trade strategies. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the trade strategies I mentioned in this video in the links below. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.